Hello, Peter Carr. How are Hello. you today? Okay. Good. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit um, about your third article in the Healing Handbook, Part 3. Okay. Um, so in that, you talk about the planes of existence. Yes. Um, can you tell me, obviously, the first one's a physical plane. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of a daft question, but how would you describe the physical plane? This is it, all around you. Don't yeah. need to describe it. <laughs> yeah. So basically, do you have cause and effect in this plane then? Yes, it exists, but it's... Uh, it's not always as people think it is. It's certainly not Newtonian motion, you know, it's, this is what um, people used to believe in, which is so totally misproven, you know. They think everything's going to work by impact, everything knocking each other along that play of balls, you know, of course, so possibly in the future, but it's not that way at all. Mm -hmm. Because it is um, all to do with energy. It's more governed by resonance than by impact. All right. You know, when, the, when two waves come together, they, they form a new wave between them, changes them both. Everything is about interacting energy. Okay, so it's not just you do something and there's a, a result after it, it's actually the energy in that action that yes, determines also the result. Yes, said it's like the causes in, in the past, it's not mechanical. Causes in the future. You've set up your future you want already and that's already changing you. There's a wave produced. Okay. It changes your resonance. Okay, and that makes you act differently in the present. Exactly. Um, going on to the next plane of existence, um, the underworld. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a little bit about that, please? Well, the underworld is actually the interface with the unconscious. I can't say it is the unconscious, because if you're conscious of it, it's not unconscious. It's a place where we interface the unconscious, and therefore can access a lot of the, the kind of deep um, um, forms, structures, laws and things that are, exist in the unconscious mind. Uh -huh. And is there any, anything that lives there? I mean, people still talk about going to the underworld and meeting this entity or whatever. Yes, you see... The unconscious tends to personify everything. All your instincts and things act as different entities in the underworld. Okay, so the, the, the things in the underworld that are basically part of us? Yes. And it's like... That's right. Hmm. Can you explain how that happens? How a part of us can become a being somewhere it's else? It's the other way around. I mean, the, that is, bef is created before the physical world. This is the end result of many layers. From the source, it doesn't go straight to where we are. It goes through layers, it gets more complex, more earthed. And so the underworld is like the formative world, where things are kind of shaped before they become physical here. And so even, um, well, even explained how like our minds create our bodies, it's like the, the first create forms in the unconscious, the forms develop there. Um, but you, you said something about if you have a belief and you bury that belief, it then That's becomes right, an entity. That way as well. It can, it can go that way too, you can create new entities that way. But uh, the first entities existed before the physical form. Because the, the, you know, I said that the, the primal instincts, which were there first as part of our bodies. So our body's been shaped according to the kind of consciousness that's gone into it and what it's supposed to do. There's an intention there again. You know, the consciousness wants to do something, it, wants to have, it needs to have certain abilities, and those abilities are first created as the entities of the underworld, which then form your physical body. Right, that's interesting. And what about the upper world then? What's the upper world? That's another layer beyond the formative, that's the causal plane, mm -hmm. where um, all possibilities exist there. So that's like your imagination? It's not the imagination itself, but obviously everything is imagined. But every possibility exists there. You see, everything you imagine is already there. When you start so working with that, you actually then bring certain possibilities down into existence. So you're saying everything that can possibly exist is in the upper world? In the, yes. Does that mean it can exist because of our thought patterns at this present time? Does that change well, it, or is it just like absolutely no, everything? No, it's there before we even think, you see. It's oh. like even our thoughts are just considering possibilities. All right, so it's there, and then we can uh, tune into these yes. things. It's a place of possibility, basically. Right. So then you might say, for instance, Keith Richards has said something once that the music's everywhere, coming out the walls and everything. It's just a case he's an antenna picking up. That's right, he's picking up what's already there. Uh, so an artist is really just tuning in to a higher vibration. It's also about controlling it. You know, basically, you, we go there so you can actually create things more efficiently. We all know that we can visualise and create things. If you go to the causal plane, where, which is where it all happens from, you, you can create far more efficiently. All right, so rather than just doing it mis like haphazardly, <coughs> you go there and you tune into it and you think about it and you send your intention there. That's right. And then kind of that gives you more power to actually yes. go and do it in this, this realm. See, the possibilities exist there. Once you put, give them energy, they begin to descend down into the underworld and the physical world. All right. So you can actually see the possibilities there and decide which ones you're going to bring into creation. Okay, so that makes... For any venture, then, it's really quite important to go there and kind of connect useful, with yes. it. Uh -huh. because you can actually make sure it happens. Mm -hmm. Make sure it happens? Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like there, there are possibilities there, you know, if you want to start a new venture. Well, the possibility of, it, of a success is there, but if you bring that down into the earth, then it's going to be a success. Is there anything that would stop you from 
doing that, you know, you could try your best to think of a particular success, you could put all the work in. Do you have any in our body? Okay. You see, if you've played failure before, every time you actually turn your mind to something new, the old creations reassert themselves. Right. So you have to, have to break those down. So that's part of the healing thing that we've been doing that's this right. week, is um, creating breaking the space, basically. Exactly, breaking down all the old creations that are causing problems. Right, so that's why it's important if you have a new venture to kind of heal yourself first, I yes, suppose. clear the way, uh -huh. clear the problems out of the way. Uh, what about the void, or you've got another name for the Aksha? The Kasha is a name for the fifth element, Kasha. which is basically like void. But another name I like to use is the Norse name, Ginnungagap, which means a magically charged void. Mm -hmm. It's more descriptive, because although it's empty, it isn't just nothing, it's potential. There's magic in that, because it's like all potential exists there before anything's happened. So although it's a void, it's all potential. But that's what the upper world was, upper world's possibility that's, and that's potential. Possibility. What's, what's the Reform. difference? Well, see, the possibility is already forming. Right. See, the potential is potential for anything. There's nothing formed yet. Okay. In the forms of pain, they're formed the different possibilities it could be. Uh -huh. In them, they avoid. There's no, not yet any thought. There's potential to create anything, but there's no even idea yet of what you're going to create. Okay, so this could be like, say, 200 years ago, the computer wouldn't be in, could be existing in the void. But no, not nothing exists in the void. Only right. potential. If it once, once it creates as an idea or possibility, it is in the in the upper world in the causal plane. Okay. You, okay. So how do you work with the void then? Basically, if you go there, it just means you, you get in touch with the pure potential. Mm -hmm. And how can that change or how can you...? It means you're more able to then work with the other layers. If you, once you are aware of possibilities and to and bring them into existence, the more potential you're in touch with, the more you can do. Okay. It's like a raw power. Okay. And what about um, the plane of the gods? That's the next level up. Yes. What, what's there? Are these, are these gods like Kali and Shiva you, you're talking yes, about? Yes, these are all emanations of the one. You know, this one source which is undefinable. Uh -huh. the, time we've, the time we've defined it, it's already moved from that oneness. It's all these different gods, the emanations of that oneness. Different okay. ways in which it acts and they've got their forms. So this is like different ways to get in contact with it? Different, um, yes, we need a, a focus if we're mm -hmm. going into oneness with source. Yeah, so when we're talking about doing devotionals to Kali and mm -hmm. stuff, that's actually an aspect of oneness. Yes. That's got particular characteristics. That's right. How did these characteristics get discovered? And, you know, who discovered these well, gods? They've sent themselves to people. You see, a lot of these um, forms already exist in, in the higher worlds before you come down to this physical world, before you become human. So it isn't a case of, like, human in inventing them. It's like people opened, began to see these things because they existed. Okay. So it's basically a, every time you meditate on a different god, you're bringing a different energy into you. Yes, it's, so you, it's a different way of relating to the source. Uh -huh. And to each person, there's a way which works best. Right. So you kind of find your own two or three gods to That's tune right. in with exactly. for your particular purpose. Yes. Um, we've got, you talk about also in the next plane is the laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. And you've got, well, nine, nine different laws. Can you briefly take us through them? Um, like, for instance, the law of attention, how does that work? Basically, what you're putting your attention on is what's growing. You see, attention isn't energy. People talk about paying attention because it is costing energy. What if you pay it, put attention on your are paying energy to, therefore you're feeding that thing. Uh -huh. So therefore, wherever your attention is going, that's what's growing in your life. So, basically, um, so how do we work? Do we work with that at all? You simply be aware of where you're going to place your attention. Right. It's like if there's good things and bad things in your life, what are you going to most attention to? Okay. A lot of people give too much attention to the problems, those problems are always growing. Uh -huh. Of course, you can't just ignore them, you actually have to actively disengage those problems, take your energy back from them. But you have to put the energy into the positive things you want. But what about, can you like, put your energy into solving the problems? You do, but um, not so much that, you give it, that you're feeding it all the time. You see, you're you, kind of worrying it and kind of just this rambling <coughs> on in your mind kind well, of thing. Well, once you've got a solution, you put your energy into that. That's not that's a positive thing. Itself. Yeah. If you think of a solution, but then keep thinking of the problem. You keep, you keep feeding that. Okay. So that's why it's important to have positive thought patterns, positive yes. attention exactly. to solve problems and then create a better future. Yes. <laughs>